Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to my uh, studio and my little painting lessons and demos, whatever you want to call them. Um, I just thought briefly, I'm going to do a sketch of my sketchbook in a minute, but uh, I just thought some people have been asking me which sketchbooks I use, so I'll just quickly get It's called Moleskin. You can buy them from Amazon. Really good book, good hardback, uh, watercolour paper in them, so you can paint on it with watercolour really successfully, no problems at all. I can use lots of water, I think you've seen in demos, you'll see in this one I use lots of water with it. Really good book, um, and like I say, get them from Amazon. Um, uh, obviously I do, I do lots of sketches in mine when I go out and uh, quick sketches. It's just a fantastic book. I'll just quickly go through it for you. I paint this place a lot because I take a group of people down there and we do like uh, plein air painting and I paint it a lot. There's quite a loose painting of some cows in a field. <laughs> Very loose. Like this one went a bit wrong. I didn't get the, the darks in. I need to put something here to create more light over that side. <clears throat> a little demo I did for YouTube that I saw on holiday in Cornwall. Um, this is the Elves of Silly. Uh, Elves of Silly. That's my ex-wife's house in the Elves of Silly. <laughs> I stay there sometimes. The New Forest. And that's a demo we did. Hearst Castle down that way. New Forest. A tree that went wrong. Uh, that's a demo from YouTube. Flower painting. A little another demo for YouTube. A little study I did, just practicing with darks. A little skyscape I did. I love doing these. These are my favourite thing to paint. If I can make a living from just painting pictures like that, because once that's actually mounted in a really good frame and uh, really nice double mount, it looks absolutely fantastic. It really does. Um, uh, Scotland, yeah. I was a silly where I used to live. Just a picture I saw, what I liked. And we get to come to today's. Okay, and I've got lots of these books, obviously. Um, and I use them all the time. They're just great. They're really good value to paint on. They don't cost that much. You get lots of pages, and you can do lots of paintings. And You're not using expensive watercolour paper in the process. So today I'm going to be doing this kind of... Uh, uh, autumnal scene through here. <clears throat> I want to really create a nice light area here and I don't want it to look overworked. My paintings are looking a bit overworked at the moment and I'm trying, I want to break that, break it down a bit and just try and stop myself from doing too much. I want to say as much as I can with the limited amount of brush strokes. So <clears throat> some people might want to criticise or fault this or critique it, whatever you want, or discuss it as an underfinished painting. But uh, I'm going to be going for very broad shapes today and just simplifying it, getting it down to its bare essentials to make a composition that works and to make the make it look like what it should look like, I suppose. Um, so we'll have a go at it and uh, we'll have a chat as I get go through the painting and see how we get along. Okay, now I've put some, let me just show you, I've put some pools of colour on my palette that I think might, that I'm going to use first. I'm going to cover the whole page with these colours. Yeah, I am. And then I'm going to use other colours on top try and make it into a painting. So I really don't know what's going to happen so let's just have a go and see what how we get on. Right I'm just squinting my eyes, I'm looking at the picture and I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to stop at this corner. I want some yellow down here because this, this, this painting is so autumnal, it's, it's crazy. Crazily autumnal, if that makes sense. And I'm just going to try a different approach to it. 
could be completely wrong. Just wash my brush a second. Now this is a mistake I often make. I don't get enough colour on my brush when I go in next time. There, I want that. And I'm just going to bring it that all the way down. I want some colour in there. I'm excited about this painting. I've been excited about a painting for a long time. So, well, that's not true, but I feel quite fired up about this one. And there's the road that takes us through, which I'm just going to add a little bit of cobalt blue to. In fact, I'm just going to paint it in cobalt blue. And that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to let that dry and I'm going to come back. Okay then. Now, the only thing I did that you didn't see was, after I turned the camera off, I forgot it was, wasn't running. I just lifted some highlights out on the side of the trees here because the light's coming this way. So I just used a, a, a what they call a thirsty brush, which is basically a brush a brush that you've uh, squeezed the water out of, and I just and it was a flat, and I just run it down the edge of the tree there just to lift some colour out, and again there, and I just used it there to lift a little bit of colour out. That's all I've done. Easy. Now when I look at the picture, I can see I'm going for blocks of colour in this one, and I'm going to keep it very blocked, but. Um, with some soft edges obviously but I can see up here this area goes back in the picture it actually drops back um, in the painting so I'm gonna just put a cool wash of cobalt blue and alizarin crimson just over that at the moment so bear with me and I'm just gonna do that trying to keep it I also want to make sure I leave some highlights for some leaves. Not many. Because I want this to be simple. There's going to be some leaves down here which I'm going to leave. And then we come up behind these trees and I can just see some of the cooler area behind those trees. Right. Let's sum up here. Right, I'm not going to do much more. The, t the temptation now is to do all sorts of things. I really don't want to do it, but I'm so tempted. You see, this is the problem. It's, I'm just going to leave that for a minute. Okay, now I'm going to be going in to put in some of the yellows that I can see. And some of them are going to get a bit lost against the other colours, but I'm just literally drawing it with a brush. Go down the side of the trees. Just going to come all the way down there. Just going to see this through because this isn't the way I'd usually paint. So I just want to. see how it goes. This is kind of like a different approach for me. I want to go back up here, even though I'm going over areas I've worked with a lighter colour. I don't care. It's not really a logical way to work going over a bright red with a 
yellow. But I suppose it's just a form of glazing, isn't it? And as you work your way down, you'll get the lighter colours. So we'll just keep doing it. working our way through but the most important thing I'm trying to achieve with this is to keep it I keep saying as lively as possible not lively so it's fresh no, no. and there's some nice yellows down here see when you obviously go I'm losing the yellow quite a bit and I'm getting quite a sort of a I don't know what colour you call it really. Because it's not yellow, it's like a very greeny yellow I'm using. But I don't care, I'm just going to go all over that so it doesn't get bitty there. Because it's. And then I'm going to come up. I've got a lot of trees going on here, but they're going to be in a lot of shadow later. So I'm just going to paint them in. And I, I really must thank everybody who watches my videos because, quite honestly, it teaches me so much. It makes me do things. This this video comes about because I'm doing it um, for YouTube, but I don't know if I would be bothering to paint this if I wasn't showing them on YouTube because I just like the interaction and, uh, you know, what we can... So I've got no idea how this is going to turn out. This side is all very much golds, which I think I'm going to leave. Um, there's a little bit of yellow there. OK, we'll just let that dry and we'll come back to it. OK then, so now I'm just going to sort of block blocking in some more golds uh, that I can see. I'll start on this side and work my way across. All coming down in front of the trees. So just I've got to put the trunks of the trees in and they're quite dark and they'll end up hopefully making the painting come alive. Later. So I'm just painting those in. This is just mixtures of um, burnt umber, cadmium red. Um, colours like that. So just blocking those in. And they carry on down this side. Kind of a bit gappy in places. just using a little sword liner. I think it's called a sword liner. No, it's called dagger brush for this. It's got a nice little tip point on it just for getting the different colours in. Getting nice leaf shapes. Okay, so I'm gonna, again I'm going to keep it quite simple. And I'm going to move over this side. And I'm just going to Take them in as I see them. I'll be coming back and putting some darks on these later. Yeah, the the idea of this is to keep it. Stop confusing myself. And we'll put the little branches in later. I'm just looking, just I'm just kind of looking at the picture, squinting my eyes, and then painting what I think. You know, I'm not going to get all the all the subtle shifts I see in the picture, in the photograph. You know, I'm not going to be able to get all those. I might just put a little bit more red in it now. I'm putting a little bit, adding a little bit more cadmium red 
to it because it's gone quite red here so I'm not going to get all the uh, like I said all the subtle colours shifts and changes of colours it's just asking too much but especially in the style that I like to paint I like to paint with an immediate style because that's because I enjoy painting outside a lot and uh, you know you don't in all fairness you don't have time to unless you want you, you, you're one of the very few and there are only a few that I can think of truly gifted beyond anything I can understand gifted painters now they can seem to do it but I don't know how they do it <laughs> I really don't right so now just find a way between the, the different layers of leaves um, where's that Make sure I stay that side of that trunk and just work my way down. There's lots going on behind there. And so basically, we've got the next layer in. We need some darker greens, there's some more greens to go in here in a bit. So I don't want to smother this with red. I want the greens to come through on this. And then we've got some more reds in here, but this is quite dark in here, so I'm just going to fill it with some colour. And then I'm going to come back and put the, the darks in later. It's all sort of shrubbery down the bottom there, so we'll leave that growing up. Um, it goes a bit higher, leaves some nice green leaves there and then it goes very, we've got to put some nice cool greens in this side in a bit. hope you can hear me okay. Um, we've got, I've got to just repeat that because I tend to mumble sometimes. I know I do. Um, I've got to put some nice cool greens in here which will also help the painting a lot. So that's kind of that stage. I'm just going to go down here with some of this colour. It's very autumnal on the ground. Very lots of leaves, obviously. But we'll be putting lots of darks down here eventually. It's, it's greener on this side than this side. I don't know why. It seems to be more autumnal on the left than it does on the right. Okay. So we'll just let that dry and then we'll do the next bit. Okay, um, I had to have a break for a couple of hours because I had to go out. So now I'm working in the evening and the uh, I'm on a daylight bulb. So the lighting might have changed a little bit. Sorry for that. But anyway, I'm going to go into just adding some more darks down this side. So basically I've just mixed up another wash of similar value, a similar colour, sorry. And now I'm just going to go have a look. Just so going to add that. Just work my way down the page. There are a few colours I've missed out on. Behind this there were some nice greens and whether my observations got better as I'm painting this painting or I just didn't see them I guess. But I wish I could have got those greens in behind these golds because they do stand out a bit like this area here but I should have had the same here but 
but we've got some lots of cool colours to go on here as well afterwards, which will make the uh, oranges and the reds stand out more. Hopefully. <laughs> I'll just work that. Now I'm going to carry the same over here. So we're just building up the layers of the painting of the leaves and uh, what not. Now I want to be careful there because that doesn't want to be dark. There's some darks behind here. And this side. I can see already whether when I when I start adding my the, the darks in, it will gain more light. I don't know, but I can see already my picture is not matching the vibrancy of the colours. I can see in, on the screen, which I don't know if I could actually match. To be honest, I don't know if it's possible. Not. It probably is. I've seen it in watercolor before, but I'll be the once we've seen the whole thing. Uh, then we can judge it better. Now what I want to do next is there's a nice green in here and this is going to start moving more towards the cooler colours and I'm hoping when I start putting the cooler colours in we're going to get some more interesting uh, things happening. But first of all I've got to put some lighter greens in first. Just there there. They go all the way up. Here. They carry on through. Then we have the same thing down here, this side, amongst the golds, there's some nice, nice greens. It looks, you know, almost like new leaves, but they can't be because we're in autumn. It must be the, I guess it's because the brown leaves against the, the old green leaves is making them look, I don't know, zestier, more alive, more new. Some nice greens going on here. So it's just building the whole thing up. I have no idea how this is going to turn out. Yeah, there is some greens coming down here. Must be grass. I 
Okay. Okay, now I'm going to start putting in some of the darker greens. In between the uh, I must So we're going to get that, then we've got more going on up here. There we go, there's those greens there. Now where do we go? Okay, I've decided now to put the tree trunks in. I'm not sure if it's the right time, but they're going in. just because I want to see how the darks start working in the painting. They're kind of lost between keep it quite simple just block them in eventually this will be much cooler and darker here so we'll lose a lot of these edges later on. There's another trunk here. Which does obliterate a lot of that. But cleverly it goes up. So we'll just leave that suggested. This one, which we have to go around. I also want to leave the light against the trunk. Like that. So I have to soften it slightly because as it's too hard. So I need to just damp my brush and just soften that edge just uh, I'll come back and put another wash over that in a bit a little bit of light just down the edge of this tree. I've made it slightly thicker than the picture. Not 
intentionally by accident. <laughs> I don't want to claim to be doing things that I'm not. But I've got some branches coming off this one so it will balance it up. next to it and then we've got this one where well, there's no light against the tree it's completely on its own but I'll paint that at the back here too much about how they fit in I'm just slotting them in but don't worry about the bases because the bases will be softened because a lot of that's going to be in shadow later so the bases will be softened and we have some back here right in the distance important some through here That's helping to show off the light on that trunk, that tree through there. Okay. Okay. I'll just start putting some of the branches in. That's That brush is too thick, I can't control it enough. This is just the
I'm going to be quite selective about the branches I put in. I don't want to put them all in and make it look too uh, too busy. I want to kind of just that's my thinking. Now, I'm not saying anything that I'm doing here is right. Is I'm just sharing with you. You know, process. Many people would no doubt reach the same, if not, and a lot better with a lot less effort. Going to leave it at that for a minute. Okay, I'm just going to start adding some cooler colours to the background to get some depth in the trees there, as I can see it from here. And I'm literally just going to put a wash over where I've already been. I can see it's quite dark in there. to go because there's so much going on in the picture I know it's only trees you've got to you've really got to be observing what you're doing and that then shows off the lights on those Every move's kind of like a trade on the next move. It's almost like a game of chess in a funny sort of way. I don't know. Perhaps I've had too much wine tonight. Saying things like that, but I kind of know what I mean. Just going back over that green. This is just a cool wash of cobalt blue and uh, cadmium red. Let's push those trees back there quite successfully. Let's push them back. Go back in there. Okay. I'm now going to add some more. I'm just going to add some more uh, burnt sienna to the mix. And I need to darken this area down now. It's nice to be back on a bigger brush. Kind of. Feels more relaxing. So break that up a little bit. I 
haven't got the uh, the brightness of colour I want down this side so I'm having to deviate from the photograph a little bit and make this darker and change the way it looks a bit I haven't got the fluorescent colours down here that show in the picture so I guess this is what it's all about really you know in all honesty I think a lot of people do that when they're painting they don't necessarily stay true to what they wanted as they find out maybe it's not working quite the way they expected they then uh, you know change things around a bit you've got no choice but then that's painting I will show you the scene afterwards I'll just I'll put the uh, the picture under the camera so you can see what I'm painting just want a, a bit more colour down this Okay, now what I want to do now, just to finish it off, or, is I need the shadows that are down here, and I'm not going to do a lot. It's just going to be some cobalt blue and some light red again, just to wash over that area. Show that area to cool it down a bit because as it stands, so I can soften all those tree trunks in. Leave some of the lights. bit of light that comes through there. I'm just going to put it in. I hope some of you found this in, you know, interesting a little study because this is how, when I talk about when people ask me what, what do I mean by experimenting, this is what I mean, this is what I do when I'm, when I'm experimenting. And today I am, you know, but I'm sharing it with everybody. This is the sort of thing I do. I get my sketchbook out. And I just have a play around. Because it's in a sketchbook, it's not. I'm not intending to have it to sell or give to anyone or whatever. It's just for. It's just my own private work for me. So, you know, you can. Um, if you've got this far, <laughs> and you've watched it, and uh, you want to come to my um, Facebook page, or my website, where I've got a free course where you can sign up for. Uh, a free members area no no money needs to ch no, nothing at all doesn't cost anybody a penny it's completely free and then you can uh, just follow the link underneath the video and you can come to my website and there's a members area there in fact I'm in the process of looking to have the forum redone and uh, 
because it's new but I just think it's getting busy now lots of people are chatting away and and I want to make it an easy experience for everyone to be able to use it so um, if you want to if you want to go there you can the link is at the bottom be great to see you or to speak to you I should say see you Right, I'm just adding the last darks now to the painting. Um, okay. I keep squinting me up my eyes to try and work out what's going on. Okay. Right, my picture really doesn't resemble actually I think the trees need to be a bit darker. This one does for sure. Yeah, I've kind of lost the trees a bit at the bottom, but I can't do anything about that now. Anyway, okay, there we have it. Um, I can look at my picture on the computer here, and I can see I've totally overworked this. You know, even even though the conversation I had when I started about keeping it simple, I'm really struggling with keeping things simple at the moment. And that's why I keep the mantra I keep putting out to people on the course. You know, we have to keep things simple to make them work. And had I had I left this earlier and not overworked it, it would have worked an awful lot better than it has now. My, I could not help. I've lost it down here. I've gone too dark, which has lost trunks of the tree, the tree trunks. So I know I've made the mistakes. Just a quick look. You can see here. Let me just take the plug out what I was trying to copy and you know shoot me down it's nothing like it really I've, I've lost all this area here and uh, I've overworked it completely but uh, anyway what I'm trying to say is even everybody makes mistakes and no nobody is kind of um, you know, it's a constant learning process. You've got to constantly keep stopping yourself and saying, right, and reevaluating what you're doing, uh, or you don't get any better. And, you know, it's a big learning curve. But, you know, the painting is not the worst painting in the world, but it's not how I wanted it to be because I couldn't resist adding more, adding more. It's knowing when to say that's enough. And that's the secret. But anyway, um, anyway, it's been great if you watched it, and uh, hopefully you'll come back for more, and we'll get more success next time. Thanks for watching, and uh, bye for now. <laughs>